We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we have a fun one in store for you because we have the amazing, the phenomenal Astro Fashionista. Give a round of applause for Tamari, everyone. <laughs> Tamari Atir is the founder of Astro Fashionista, LLC. She's a professional astrologer and personal success coach. Her mission is to encourage and empower people People to create prosperity in every area of their lives by using the ancient gift of astrology. To Mary's website, astrofashionistas.com, gives visitors practical advice on how to use astrology every day to maximize their success in a fun and relatable way. And she's also one of the consultants for this spicy life. She is my go to for everything romance astrology when it comes to trying to set my clients up and help them have success in their love life. We're over here matching with signs. She's giving me insight onto why they may be behaving the way that they are, why they're not compatible with certain signs. So today's episode, I'm so happy to have you, Tamari, on today's episode. Today's episode is, do titles really matter, right? Are we overthinking these things? Ty, you and I got into a conversation about titles um, and (laughs) we were like, we just need to do a whole episode on this. We're just going to save this whole discussion for the podcast. So I'm excited to have you on the show. Um, so you, you, you're, I feel like you're a regular, you always come on here and grace us with your phenomenal presence. Um, so I love being a regular. <laughs> <laughs> I love having you on though, cause it's always fun. Um, oh, and you're going to be so proud. Last, I think episode I had you on was about like restyling my house based on my signs. Yes. Me yes. and my husband signs. Um, the, I can't wait to send you the video of like what we've done so far since like you were Yay. on here last, we did the chimney. Um, I've done the living room. I got all the furniture that you said, um, got a bar up there. Like, just wait till you see it. I'm going to edit oh, a whole wait. video, all the advice you gave me based on our signs. But today, because this is like all around relationship, um, I want to focus purely on like titles and do they matter? I have a lot of clients who are now open to like maybe I should just have an open relationship or maybe like they're just, they're going all over the place about like situationships and, you know, what titles they should have. So usually, you know, we start off with you telling us when you first fell in love with yourself. That's like my usual go-to, but you have told us that before. Yeah. I don't know what I said, but (laughs) I know I said it before. So I usually ask that as the S in spicy, which is self, or I'll go to the P for passion, or I'll go to the I for intimacy. Uh, but to not make you over disclose, cause I know that hubby doesn't like all your business out there. I'm going to ask you the C in communication. What's the best compliment you ever received? Please do share with us. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with the most recent I did. A, um, it happened today and I was on with this woman doing like a talk to her, like community of people. And she said that I'm like the perfect mix of the astrology and the beauty and combining both of them. Ooh. And I was like, oh, thank you. Because that's like Astro Fashionista. It kind of really embodies my name. And I was like, oh, I received that. Because we were talking about self-worth and how yes. we always make excuses when people give us compliments. So I was like, I'll just take that compliment. Thank you. So yeah, that happened today. I love that. And it's so yeah. true. I She saw right through you. <laughs> <laughs> she saw the depths of your soul for her to pick that <laughs> That's a great one. I want you guys who are listening too to be able to identify what the best compliment you've ever had or even ask someone, maybe you're going on a date or maybe you're um, in one of the apps, ask them that question. It gets them um, talking about themselves and sharing a personal compliment. It also makes them relive that experience and travel back to that time when they received the compliment. And it also gives you insight into what they think about themselves. Are they going to be bashful to share or are they open with it? Um, and it also makes them have those that feel good energy when they're giving you that. And then they may even ask you back if they have healthy communication, <laughs> they'll ask yeah. you and toss you that back. So that's a good spice breaker for you guys. So you guys go ahead, and borrow that one from me. Um, yeah, but talk, one. There's a lot of breakups that are going on in 2021. Um, want to share some of these because these are breakups that either they were, um, dating and they broke up engaged and they broke up or married and they broke up. So I'm going to go mm-hmm. through this list with you to give you the spicy dish. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Ooh, and I'm going to look up their birthdays <laughs> while you do that. I'm going to look up their. Oh, time. perfect. Yes. Yeah, so Todd's going to, as we go through this episode, give us some astrology as well on like signs that are more likely to break up or why, you know, certain signs um, need more titles than others. Like. Is it a personality thing? Um, do Capricorns, because, you know, those are the best. Do Capricorns need, <laughs> do we care more about titles than other Zodiacs? 
Absolutely. Capricorn is about success. It's about seeing the fruits of your labor, which is one of our arguments why we think titles matter. And so you're not going to go into anything that's not going to be beneficial for your future, Mm. for your legacy. So the title, and it's one of the more traditional signs, even if you're more like you're a spicy Capricorn, Mm -hmm. but still you're still rooted in tradition. So absolutely Capricorns need the title. They want to be acknowledged. Yeah. Okay. I would agree very much with that. (laughs) I'm all about Mm -hmm. my credit. I'm like, run me my credit. (laughs) (laughs) Anytime someone has accomplished, I'm like, you know, I helped you with that, right? Like, oh, you're not going to be humble about this at all. Nope. I love a good told you so. (laughs) Yes. Yes. That's so true. true. (laughs) I can't help it. Okay. So like in our spicy dish, um, a couple that actually loves, uh, all the credibility, all of the attention, all of the fame and glory is Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Um, recently just filed for divorce February 19th. And this is a couple that have been together for, I think like about six years now. Um, she's 40, I think he's 43 and they have children together, North Chicago, Saint and Psalm. And they've created this like life of, you know, financial wealth together. I think that they've, um, acquired a lot and they're still sticking to the good old fashioned, um, what is it called when you, Prenup. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm acting like I don't know what that is. Um, because, because, uh, we, I didn't sign one. Um, but, uh, at this point in my career, I feel like my husband is going to stand to make more than I would like I built my <laughs> yeah. empire and I'm going to continue hey, to build it. Um, yeah. so he will probably benefit even more than I would go in, but originally not so much. So, Anywho, um, they're going through a divorce and they've been together, like I said, for a while now. And it's unfortunate, but I think we all kind of predicted that this was going to happen. So this leads me to ask, like, do you think that Kim needed to go from just boyfriend and girlfriend to engagement and marriage, knowing how much her and Kanye, both of them had to lose? Did they need to switch up the status of their relationship? No, I think it was very important for Kim uh, to have that title just for who she is. Mm -hmm. Um, Kim is, I've done her chart. I've done even a whole report in astrology college about Kim Kardashian. (laughs) Venus I know Venus is the highest planet in her chart, meaning it has a lot of acknowledgement. She puts a lot of emphasis on relationships. This we know. Mm -hmm. Um, she's also a Libra. Libra is about relationships and partnerships, but her Venus is in detriment in Virgo. Um, it's in fall, actually. So it's, it's a really hard place for Virg- for Venus to be. And so she learns a lot of lessons of, in relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, But it's also one of her biggest gifts, right? Because Venus also is connected to our beauty and how we come across and how we look. So it's like a double-edged sword for her. I think she's a person that will always, like, try. Like, I think even if, I wouldn't be surprised if she got married a fourth time. Um, I'm not saying she definitely mm-hmm. will, but I know she identifies with Elizabeth Taylor and she yeah. kind of like memorizes that. Um, but I think she is a person that's just in love with love. And I really think that's because of her her Libra, her Libra son. Her and Kanye actually were pretty compatible. Oh, he's really? A Gem- he's a Gemini. I mean, Gemini and Libra are pretty compatible from a sun sign standpoint. Um, but we all know that Geminis have the reputation for kind of like, Sometimes it's a roller coaster. So I think for her, <laughs> sometimes everybody sometimes. else is dating a Gemini. We know. Okay. Or you got a friend that's a Gemini or a family member that's a Gemini. Ooh, cuckoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love my Geminis out there. We love them. I love my Geminis. You guys are the most fun clients. I never know what I'm going to get from day to day. <laughs> <laughs> but I think after a while, it just gets. Uh, you know, she has four kids. Like you cannot be on a roller coaster for the rest of your life. You need yeah. your partner to be stable. And with him kind of coming out and saying things about her family, I mean, we, we don't know what really went on behind closed doors. But yeah. I think for her, where image is super important, obviously that would end up being a problem for her. So they made it longer than I thought. So kudos to them. That's how I felt too. I was like, oh, wow. But knowing what her goals were, right? Her relationship goals, it made sense for, because she wanted a family. She spoke to a family um, and her previous relationship, she didn't have one. So clearly mm-hmm. she felt secure enough in this relationship to move forward, get married and start one, right? They invested in yeah. a lot of children together um, <laughs> financially, right? Because yeah. Sarah gets cost a lot too. Um, but also in like the time and energy that they had. And I I am shocked at the fact that like they made it this long, but um, do you believe their love? Like, was their love real? 
I do think that they're, um, I feel like their infatuation was real. I mean, okay. who am I to say great. someone's love is <laughs> Oh, real. no, we're judging right now. No. <laughs> but, I mean, at the end of the day, we know Kim Kanye was very infatuated. I mean, at least he seemed to be very infatuated with her. And I feel like Kim loves being admired, especially by someone who's powerful and a trendsetter. And she probably respected his mind. I mean, she has Venus and Virgo, so she loves, like, to be stimulated. And she's smarter than what people get, give her credit mm-hmm. for. Um, so I can't say it was a deep soulmate love, but I definitely think they were enamored with each other for sure. This is just random, but like, is my J-Lo and A-Rod going to last? Cause Ooh, the Leo and Leo. Uh, they keep going back and like, they're engaged right now, but she's like, she's like not tripping off of a wedding. And so, but come on now, J-Lo loves a good engagement. Like she's good for like, give me that engagement <laughs> ring. Now, whether it actually happens and it turns into marriage, that's a whole nother thing. But I feel like she too was on the like, love in love mm-hmm. with love um elizabeth taylor kick and i love her she for is. it because she stays with a man mm-hmm. she, yeah she her and holly and they're both leos mm-hmm. so like i think they're just more like i'm gonna keep getting it like I'm gonna <laughs> you know what i mean like as long as i look good they i don't think they even think anything of it they're so used to being judged for it that yeah they're like what because even holly just had a comment where she said like who said i wanted to keep them like when people were like you can't yeah they were coming man. for her she was like, who said I wanted to keep, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, she's like, I'll, I'll keep the right one or something like that. Like, I'm not about to yeah. keep someone I don't want. Yeah. It yeah, was something like, along those lines. Yeah. yeah. So I think they're, yeah, I think Leo is a sign that is connected to the heart. It's all about love. They're big grandeur. They love big expressions of love, generalizing, of course. So I think like the idea of it is something that they're always going to be attracted yeah. to. And so she'll keep trying. And Jayla's even said that, I feel like. I feel like she said very Leo words about, I love love. I'm such a believer in love. So I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, I hope it works out for them. He's a Leo too. So maybe they both just stroke each other's ego all day. You know what I mean? <laughs> That'd be a great relationship. I mean, you just right? like, affirm one another all the time. <laughs> exactly. Like they get each other. They know what each other needs. So, But also both very stubborn. So when they get in the mm. fights, it's like, who's going to win? So I don't know. I feel like A-Rod kind of, he kind of gives into J Lo. I have the feeling that he kind of lets her run the show a little bit. I think a lot of her men, um, you know, I mean, she she's she requires that. I require that too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they cater to me, but then like you also have to know when to like boop, be quiet. I think yeah. um, while she may not show it, that probably does exist though, because I don't think that she can be in a relationship with someone who doesn't tell her like every now and then she needs to shut up. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I feel like. Every every now and then, us women kind of like to be put in our place. For sure. So, <laughs> so I feel like that's something that, even though we may not see A-Rod doing it, I'm sure every now and then he's like, woman, come on now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, she needs respect. Like, she needs someone that she's going to respect. But I do, I, I think they may go forward with the wedding. Like, knowing, I, I, I would love, I would love that. Now, to circle it back, we're talking today about, like, do titles matter, right? So, what we brought up was Kanye and Kim, and then, like, J-Lo and A-Rod. They haven't broken up, thank God. But um, some other couples that have broken up or that have split uh, are, uh, oh, what's the name of it? Oh, Zoe Kravitz. So, I love Zoe. Mm. She's so cute. But her and Carl Glusman have recently just broken up this year. And then also I had one more other couple that have just broken up that I was like, oh, um, oh, uh, Shia LaBeouf and his girl. Um, <laughs> oh. uh, why is that relevant? Well, because I just watched a movie with Shia LaBeouf um, <laughs> where he was playing like a white vato. Um, Dang, what was the name of that movie? I'm gonna look it up in a second. Hold on, now I have to tell you because I want you guys to actually yeah. see it and I want to hear your guys' opinion on it. Uh, Shiloh LaBeouf. Like, you guys are going to be like, spicy, why are you? Because everybody needs content right now. And Oh, Tax Collector. Oh, I okay. haven't seen that. Have you seen it? Okay, no. it's like a gangster movie or whatever, but um, he's not playing a Latino. I think he's playing a white person who grew up in um, like Mexican culture. Okay. And so um, anyways, he just broke up with his girl who allegedly he was uh, physically violent with or put his hands on like that's what she's accusing of course he's denying it but either way we're talking about these breakups so the reason why I bring these breakups up is because some people um have come out even I think Safari recently come out and say like I'm never going to get married again like it was the worst decision I made or I'm never going to you know be committed again when people like get into relationships that don't wind up working out they always make these 
you know, accusations or they always say like, I'm not going to do this again. Or, you know, what's the point? I'd have a lot of clients who would even come to me and even though they want their like relationship coaching, they're like, maybe it's not in the cards for me. I am anti giving up on relationships. I think that if you do the self work, you can heal and become a better person in the next relationship, the next go round. Um, I'm also anti leaving it gray area based on the phase that you're in, in your life, right? If you are just starting off in your early twenties and you have decided that you are going to be in puppy love, commit to puppy love. If you have decided that you're going to go through after puppy love, your clingy attachment phase, go through that as well. If you're going to go through your hoe phase, dedicate yourself to that as well. If you're going to come out of your hoe phase and do your detox, like majority of us coming out of the hoe phase do, (laughs) commit to that phase as well. But based on like the phase that you're in, and then we go through the, I'm ready to be married and I want to be taken seriously phase, Mm -hmm. right? Commit to those phases because whatever that phase is, you got to get through it. You got to have those life experiences and lessons in order to learn from it. But we get to a certain place in our life where we realize, I don't want to play games anymore. I want to be in a real relationship. Now, whether the other person is willing to give you what it is that you are asking for or acquiring in a relationship is a whole nother story, right? Did you get with someone who believes in commitment? Did you get with someone who believes in titles, which is about what today's episode is? So I want us to discuss why are titles important? Why do they matter? Why can't we just stay in this great area of situationships? Ta, let me hear what's your take on it. Okay. So there's so many, I, I was thinking about this because I have a friend that she is has been in a long-term relationship for like seven years. She has a baby with her partner and they're getting married. And it's not something that either one of them prioritized, but I was talking to her and I was like, well, it's going to be different after you get married. And she's like, really? Like we've been together so long. And I'm thinking like, why am I telling her this? But I just remember just, I mean, I lived with two men before I got married. So I've been in domestic. Not at the same time. She did not. <laughs> I know you want to clear like, that up? First of all, it sounds like, damn, like we've been shacking up. <laughs> but um, yes, I was, you know, seven years, lived with someone, not for the full seven years. And another person, I was with four years, lived with them. I lived with my husband before we got married. Like those are three different, but it didn't really click as very serious until the day we said, I do. Mm. Things just escalated to the next level. And I was really thinking about that. And I'm like, that's because relationships, I mean, we live in a world where success and titles are important because it's important for us to be acknowledged, yep. first of all. Um, we need to be acknowledged for our, like if we were sleeping with a man and he upgrades us to girlfriend, it makes us feel seen. It makes us feel like worthy and not saying that your self-worth comes from the title because you should already be doing that before you get in this mm-hmm. relationship. But it kind of validates the work that you put in. And so it's similar to like a job or your career. And I feel like we've talked about how dating, like you should be putting as much effort into your dating life as you're putting into your career. Yes, because we have. Let's re- that's your you life. that. Say that one more again for the people in the back. <laughs> yes. If you're putting a lot of effort in your career, you should be putting the same amount of effort in your relationship or your dating life if being in a relationship or having a relationship goal is important to you. So. Think about in business, there's objectives and key results, OKRs. And so these are things, these are actionable, measurable things that you're working towards to achieve a business goal. You should have the same thing for your relationship. So Mm -hmm. if you're someone like you were just saying, and you want to be in the thought hot girl period, that's your objective and your key result, right? Right. So it's nothing wrong with that. If you're wanting to say, you know, settle down and have you just be someone's girlfriend or their partner. What's your objective and key result? How are you going to get there? Same thing with marriage. So it's about approaching it from planning your life. You know what I mean? Like you're not just going to go out in life and just live. A lot of people do. And I think in our twenties, we do. <laughs> when it comes what to relationships, tw- yeah. When our twenties, we do just live. <laughs> but exactly. But like we get late twenties, it starts to click in, and we're like, ooh, 27, 28, 29. Let me take this a little bit more serious. And then thirty hits, and we're like, oh no, 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 no. I need to switch this up real quick. <laughs> yep, and but- that's. That's your spicy you tip your- is um, have uh, key objectables. What is it? Yeah, objective and objective. Key and objective, key, uh, key mm-hmm. objective and results. Yep. Okay. So you're setting up object. What am I trying to achieve? And how? What's the measurable way I'm going to get there? Like objectives and key do- results. I want you guys to like mm-hmm. let this sink in. Yes. And that way you're co-creating with the universe. You're so if you're going to hire Spicy Mati to be your you know, relationship coach, that is 
a way that you're going to get to your goal. Like that, you really need to think smart about it because life is short. You know what I mean? Like you don't have as much time. And by the way, you were saying your twenties into your thirties, that's the time when you go through your Saturn return and your astrology chart Mm -hmm. and you're moving from, you know, childhood to it's a rites of passage. You're moving into adulthood. And so it's time for you to really think about what your life is going to be like for the next 30 years. Right. And so don't do that without a plan is what we're kind of talking about. And so if your plan is to be a wife, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be a wife. And I think with women in business and in relationships, we always get the short end of the stick. Mm. We don't ask for what we want in business. Facts. So we don't negotiate be- our salaries properly. Exactly. And so if you want to be, if you're doing a director's job at a manager's salary and title, you would never stand for that. So why would you stand for doing a wife's duty when you're just a girlfriend? That I mean, I know some guys will say, well, I want to see how you do it before, you know, before <laughs> I wife you. But that's just game. Like you don't deserve all the treatment. Everything. You know, put a ring on it. It's also a give and take, right? So like what I tend to ask my clients is like, what's the relationship goal? So like similar to what you're saying about key objectives. What's the relationship goal, right? Based on the goal, that's how we're going to pursue this relationship. And then we take it a next step and we say like, what's their intentions with us so that we know that we're on the same page. And then also, how does this person show up and prove that? So based on how the person is treating us, that lets us know how much wifey impersonations. Um, I don't want people to be fraudulent out there. But I guess what I'm saying is like, it lets you know how much to give when it comes to the relationship. If the person's only giving you a part of your benefits package, um, you know, uh, just the weekend spending time with them, well, that doesn't mean that you're going to go above and beyond and cook for them, clean for them, do the laundry, like all of the domestic stuff going above and beyond. And like, oh, I heard him say he likes shirts. So I'm going to go do that. Like we start throwing everything at the person when they aren't giving us even the bare necessities of the things that we've asked for in signing up for this. And so the reason I think that we're circling back to like titles and why they matter is because it creates clear defined roles of how you are going to show up in the relationship and how that person is going to show up in the relationship. And the roles are clearly defined by you saying to your partner, hey, this is where I foresee our future or what I would like my position in your life to be. How do you see me as uh, playing a role or position in your life? What would you like to be in my life? And then we have a discussion about what expectations that comes with. It's not just assumed just because you gave me the title of the girlfriend and I'm not, you know, your F buddy anymore, or I'm not in a situation with you anymore, or I'm not in the dating, just, you know, bare dating phase with you anymore. Then now I'm entitled to your phone calls. You're not like, we come with these expectations of, you know, well, once we're in a relationship, it's going to be like this. No, 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 no. You need to communicate that in advance. Just like when we're going through the job process, you were like, what are my bit? What comes with my benefits package? Am I getting health insurance? Am I like you have this long ass contract <laughs> before you sign on the dotted line and you start showing up to work every day? So yeah. <laughs> while there doesn't need to be paperwork in advance for boyfriend and girlfriend, that is like one of the beginning titles. But even getting before that title, you even want to know where they stand on what marriage too, right? Like if they believe in marriage. Um, so I, I love your point ta, about having these objectives and then being clear if we, with your other partner, like, are you on the same page with me? Are these your objectives? Cause if not, what are we doing this for? Exactly. Yeah. And it just saves you from a lot of heartache in the end where, well, he was treating me like this. And it was like, but did you guys, like, I know people are like, well, we didn't say he didn't ask me to be his girlfriend. Like who does that? Right. <laughs> but it is a discussion you need to have, even if you're in your thirties, like, are we committed there? You don't have to have them circle. Will you make, date me? Yes or no. Like just say, are we committed? Are we seeing other people? Are we committed to each other? It can be that simple so that you're not, you know, getting your hopes up and wasting your quality time and your years that you could be given to someone else. And I'm going to take it a step further and tell you, like, <laughs> when I'm coaching my clients, I'm, I tell them that they are open and honest, that they are dating other men or have the man, even if he's, if it's a guy, um, tell him be open and honest that you're dating other women because one, it puts fire into the ass of the other person so that they know you haven't taken yourself off the market yet because they haven't taken you off the market. Mm-hmm. And you're looking for a status change in your role before you do that. 
in addition to the fact that it shows, you know, that you love yourself more and you're going to put your priorities first, although you do care about them, you can still show up and let them court you or you do the courting, but like that transparency and letting the person know that it hasn't become all about them until they've earned that, or they've made that clear that that's what they want. Um, it helps with the relationship in even like giving you something to achieve or to attain that status yeah. change. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. Cause you're, you're just, you're putting yourself first at the, I mean, relationships are just a reflection of how much you value yourself. So mm-hmm. you don't have to, to be an asshole about it, but just, you know, be honest. And you obviously coach people on how to have that conversation so that it's not like a threat or you right. know what I mean? Well, I'm still dating enough people. Like it doesn't have to be. No, like no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. We show up as like the way that we are going to frame it is going to say like, well, I love that we are open and honest and that we're continuing to see other people until we decide that we're going to be committed. So Mm -hmm. instead of it being like, well, if you don't commit to me, I'm still date other people. Like you said, like, no, 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 no. We're not doing threats. People need to feel Mm -hmm. like it's their decision, but we're showing up in our (laughs) true honesty of until we decide, because it's a mutual decision that we stop seeing other people. I'm going to continue living my best life and enjoying you. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the first point so that you guys know, just to recap is you want to identify your role. That's the, that's the benefit, right? It lets you know your status in the relationship and who you are to that person when you have a title. The second thing that titles matter, (laughs) titles matter. Um, (laughs) The second reason why titles matter is it identifies credibility, right? Mm -hmm. So, even in the workplace, because we keep using workplace as an example, it lets you know how to treat a person based on their role title or their status. When you know the title of someone, it lets you know how much uh, energy they put in the game, how much experience they've had, or even how others view them to give them this title. So it's the same thing when it comes to relationship. If I think that you're single or I think that you are um just boyfriend and girlfriend, Ta, I may have a different perspective on your ability to um, have experience in relationships and the knowledge that you give me in um, the wisdom that you have and also in your status and how you carry yourself. Or, you know, maybe I'm going to, I'm going to look at how you prioritize our relationship versus your other relationships different. Meaning if we have girls night, I'm going to respect it a little bit different if you're running home to your husband versus if you're cutting it short for like your third boyfriend this year. So like (laughs) we treat each other different, you know what I'm saying? Like based on, and it's not to say that we should treat people less if if they have a single status versus a boyfriend and girlfriend or marriage. But what it's to say is it lets you respect certain boundaries that are put in place when you know that someone has to put someone else before you. It makes you less selfish as a friend, less selfish as a family member, less selfish as um, even sometimes a lover when you put that status in there and lets you know, like, okay, I do need to put my partner sometimes before my selfish ways. And I'm I'm, I'm selfish. So like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but when, Mm -hmm. um, when you come along and you're like, spicy, I can't stay at our girls night all night. I have to get back to my husband. I'm like, Ugh. but then I'm like, you know what? That is your husband, girl. I was there for the other boyfriend. Yes. You got to respect Kofi. <laughs> I, can be, I can be demoted, right? Like, just because, <laughs> like, you can be, you can lose your job. You can be demoted. You, that's why your title is also important because I need to stay on my P's and Q's. There's other women that will take my job. You know what I mean? Not the demotion yet. <laughs> but like, I better be giving him all the attention. You know what I mean? Like that is another reason why I think titles are important too. You're just expecting more when you're, you know, there's levels to it. There literally is. That is hilarious. I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell my husband, are you lucky you made those burgers? Are you about to be demoted? <laughs> <laughs> I was here today asking to make some burgers and I saw those burgers were made. He is not getting a demotion today. <laughs> But that is true. It does. I love this. So this is a great example. But like, as you know, professional women who run our own companies and have like really built up our careers, I like that we're able to speak to the um, strong, you know, alpha female community or just the professional female community that can really understand what we're saying. And even the male community, like, because we haven't been listening to this podcast too, they be taking my spicy tips back home. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> how this parallels, but we want you to carry this same confidence, this same energy when it comes to your relationship. And Toss said earlier, you're not going to settle in your career. Why would you do it in your personal life? So the next point, this is point number three. 
it also identifies your authority. So mm. when, and this is different than the credibility component. The reason why this identifies your authority is because when it comes to the amount of years, we take that seriously. When you tell me that you are newlyweds or you just have been in a relationship with someone for a month, right? I'm not going to maybe have the same level of respect or bow down when you've only been with your boyfriend for a month or you're in puppy love phase um, and you're in honeymoon phase when it comes to your relationship versus someone who, when we hear like this person's been married for 15 years, we're like, whoa, tell us your secrets. How did you do yeah. it? Girl, give me wisdom. And yeah. the number one question I get when like um, it, media or anyone reaches out to me, um, clients or um, people looking for a consultation, the number one question I get is, are you married? Like oh, um, yes. they don't want to take my advice if they know yes. I haven't drank my own Kool-Aid. And so that's, that's the number one question that I get more than like, what's your success rate, right? Because you think that'd be important. Um, they want to know, have you drank your own Kool-Aid? What's your success rate for yourself? And so yes. your relationship status does matter, especially us being like in this industry. It provides credibility to us, but it also provides authority in, hey, I know what I'm talking about because not only have I been through all the phases that you've been through, I've gone through every phase that I just said, y'all have been through, I have been through. So mm -hmm. it gives me authority to be able to say like, hey, if you want to avoid this heartache or if you want to avoid um, this crash and burn when it comes to a relationship or when you want to avoid this upset, this is the path of least resistance. This is the decision mm -hmm. that you should make for your relationship. And I'm going to be able to guide you in that path. But the same thing comes when it comes to your decision-making ability for your own love life. If mm -hmm. you are someone who has never demanded to be a girlfriend or don't have the expectations of ever being a fiance or a wife, and you're out there dating and someone's like, okay, so you don't require people to make you settle down or people to commit to you, that tells them that they don't have to commit to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so true. That is so true. Yeah. It's like, what level, what are you holding yourself accountable for? Like, yeah. what do you want? It goes, comes back to that. And it's okay. We're not saying that you have to have a title. It's saying define what you want your title to be and Correct. then act in that way. Correct. Because we know some people aren't about societal norms. Like you should do whatever works for you. But to just be out here, you're just going to be, you're going to be aimless. Like you would be aimless if you didn't have career goals. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's like, be clear on those, define those. And then also you want to have like a track record of experience. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. When it comes to <laughs> like, I want to know, I ask how many relationships have you been in? And then I ask mm -hmm. how many healthy relationships have you been in? Mm -hmm. Because there's a difference between having relationship experience and having healthy relationship experience. And I've yeah. said this before, you don't want your next person to be like the guinea pig of when you're going to step up for the first time or when you, although it does happen at some point, you have to step up. But like, if you have a track record of experience and saying like, I'll use this for example. I have, and I've, I think I've mentioned this before. I have a, a rule in my relationship that um, if we're in the same room with my husband, he has to, and a woman who he slept with, he has to share with me if I'm in that room with her, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I want him to bend over and be like, babe, there's someone I hit from the past. I don't want to look <laughs> like boo with a fool and have him sharing a secret with another woman in that room and I'm on the outside, right? Yeah, and she's probably yeah. fantasizing about his six pack and stuff and I just can't be having that. He's <laughs> like, let me, let, let me make sure, uh, you know, I'm over here on his arm. So that's my rule that I put in place. The reason why I did is because past relationship experiences taught me that it affects me. I don't like being in the dark. Um, I don't like that um, female circling back later on telling me mm -hmm. um, something that I didn't know. I don't like hearing it from. So I have relationship experience. That I'm able now to say in this relationship moving forward, I would like to see this different, right? Mm -hmm. I have authority because I can say, hey, this didn't serve me in the past relationship, babe. And while it doesn't bother you, I need you to honor it for me. Yeah. And he has to respect that because I got relationship experience to prove why I feel the way that I do. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yes. It's all about life experience. I love that. Okay. Next one that uh, why titles matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> the change in your title indicates that you're committed to learning and growing 
in your field, right? Like if it came to business, mm-hmm. it would be in your field. Well, in this particular one, it's in relationships um, that you can take on new and increased responsibilities. So as you mm-hmm. progress in the career place, it shows that you can take more load on, that you're capable of taking yeah. more load. It's why the job people, you know, or recruiters are always looking at your resumes and they're like, okay, they want to see progression in the roles that you've gone to. Mm-hmm. Same thing with relationships have the titles of your progression shown that you're capable of adding additional roles and growth and responsibilities. And so what maybe like early on in our twenties, we shouldn't be doing like everything for the man or like, give me, okay, let me use an example of like, um, maybe early on in our twenties, I I was popping him popcorn, but now in my grown woman phase, like, I'm like, okay, I don't mind cooking dinner for him. He's taking me out three times. I'll cook dinner for him this time. You know what I'm saying? Like the responsibility. (laughs) That man deserves a meal as a, he's a boyfriend. He deserves a, that man deserves a meal. What? He's that gotta, example. He's gotta earn, earn these breakfast burritos. Uh, <laughs> oh, those are fire. Spicy Monty's yeah. breakfast burritos are fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I hook Shay. He still be talking about my spicy burritos. Oh, he he came over the first time he came over uh, when we were first dating or whatever. Didi was like, "You gonna make those spicy burritos for him? Those, those, <laughs> those breakfast burritos? You gonna hit him with them?" And I was like, "Yep, sure am." Next thing you know, boom. <laughs> Put a ring on it. <laughs> so funny. Those are fire. Oh my God. Take our word for it. <laughs> but when you're younger, situ- things like that, like I was more in a situation of like, what are you going to do for me? How are you going to court me? And then of course, understanding through maturity, like there's certain responsibilities that you do want to take on or certain, certain things that you can handle, even in communication. Um, I'm sure you fight differently now, even with conflict resolution to marry than you yeah. did when you were younger, right? Like how you handled yeah. problems and past relationships. Um, yeah. Now you handle them and you can handle the responsibility of what these hard conversations look like because mm-hmm. you have gone from situationships to girlfriend, to fiance, to wife, to be able to work out those different challenges that come up and work through mm-hmm. those processes. But I'll be damned if you over here in a situation ship trying to practice conflict resolution for three years with someone in a situation ship. Like, no, you upgrade my title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is just, that is such a good point. And also it had me thinking about like when you said the level of responsibility, because there's also an expected response. Well, you expect certain things from your yeah. husband versus your boyfriend. So for instance, when after my husband and I got married, my dad got sick, almost died. My last living parent mm-hmm. was in the hospital for months. And my husband was there every single day, every appointment, taking my dad to the doctor, like just stepping up. I would have never expected that mm. from a past boyfriend, even yeah. though that I would have appreciated the support. I didn't necessarily expect it from him, but I did expect it. You know what I mean? Like, how's my husband? You would have had words if he did it. Yeah, yeah, like I'm gonna be at the hospital every day and you're sitting you know watching marvel or whatever so <laughs> i really appreciated that but that was the level of responsibility that came with having a wife and i would do the same for him so that is an excellent point because you're not going to give your all 100 percent to someone that you haven't gotten that level of commitment from i think people are scared though to marry that when the titles get added on, right? Like when we move from dating to boyfriend and girlfriend, there is these expectancies and people change. Or when we move to fiance, it's going to change. Or when we move to marriage, it's going to change. And they're afraid that they're not going to get the amazing things that they got when that pressure wasn't on there. Because sometimes Mm -hmm. there is that like, now that I have the, now that I have this title, there's this expectancy of like how you're supposed to perform But oftentimes we haven't communicated that expectancy, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So when it doesn't happen, it now turns into turmoil or someone is punished for those expectations not being met. But when it's communicated or someone does do something kind of like what Kofi did for you and appreciation is shown like, wow, I didn't necessarily expect for you to show up for me. I knew this came with my benefits package, but I didn't know how (laughs) it was really going to (laughs) go. But I'm so thrilled that you did. Like yes. now it encourages him to keep showing up for you in that way. 
Um, but there's this fear of, right. Like, and sometimes, you know, men experience it often of like, well, what if I drop the ball? What if I don't show up for her the way that she needs, you know, what if she's not going to respect me or, you know, it's the same thing for us as women. Like, what if he falls out of love me or he's not going to cherish me Mm -hmm. because I'm not capable of showing up in with his expectations of this job title or this relationship title change. Mm -hmm. There's this fear that comes into us of like the unknown of what happens if we take on that next role. In yeah, addition no, to the accountability yeah. part, right? Because oftentimes we're not giving the titles to people because we don't want to be accountable to them. How mm-hmm. do you feel about that when we don't, you know, I have couples all the time or um, clients all the time that come in and like they've been after in situation after situation with men who wouldn't give them the relationship title that they were seeking because they wanted to still like sow their wild oats. Is it roots mm-hmm. or oats? Uh, I think it's wild oats. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's like a real like farm. I just got that's like a farming term. Soil your wild oats. Yeah, oh, like farm. Oh, like, like so, such an like, airhead right now. So your wild <laughs> oats. Yeah. Oh, or is it roots? Because it could be roots too if you're saying farm. Um, let me ask uh, Shay about that. But <laughs> but they uh, you're running in the streets, right? Like they want to do their mm. thing. They don't want to be responsible for you emotionally and make you feel attached. So by not giving you the title, it puts this boundary up of you not feeling entitled or you not being able to expect the things that you fully want in a relationship. And that's with them moving under the assumption that it's going to change things. What do you think about men who won't give you the title or even women? Because I've seen women do it too. They won't give you the title because they don't want to move to that next level of expectancy or responsibility. Mm -hmm. Well, I think then those people haven't, they haven't said what their objective and key result is. And if they have, then they're lying about it. Yeah. So like if they said, I want a wife, but you've been in a situationship with them for six months, then you know, you should know by six months if he's taking you serious or not, Mm -hmm. he's not being honest with you. And that's when you need to make the assessment like, okay, maybe I need to leave the situation because it's not going where I want it to go. It's the same as if you had a a check-in, a year or half annual check-in with your employer Yep. and they say, I'm going to give you a rave and, you know, in six months. And if you do X, Y, and Z, like if they're not living up to that, then you're like, hmm, you know what? I might have to go start looking for another job. So it's the same thing. Um, it's about the communication, like you said. And I think a lot of that is rooted in fear. Obviously, yep. I understand that people don't want to give too much because they feel like, okay, once I give her the ring, she's going to stop acting this way or she's going to you know, stop giving me all this mm-hmm. attention or vice versa. But if that's the case, then you must not know your partner as well as you think you do. Right, you because- don't trust Yeah, exactly. Because you don't trust them. And B, you should, like, there is a difference from going from, you know, committed partnership to marriage. But in terms of how the relationship is and the respect level, that shouldn't change. So like, if someone is worthy enough, quote unquote, to be your husband or your wife, you're already looking at them in their light, that light, that's because they're doing things that you could see your partner your committed partner doing. Yeah. So if you are having doubts about that, then you shouldn't even be considering marrying that person. That's just how I see it. And like, so yes, absolutely. If you're, if you're having those doubts, but like what is easier said than done is when to walk away because oftentimes, right. We get into, even with a job or a relationship where we're like, I'm just going to try this position out, see if it works out for me. And then we get a little comfortable and we're like, okay, I'm not necessarily getting what I want. I can't stand Mm -hmm. the people in this company. I I don't really (laughs) vibe with the corporate culture. It's the same thing in relationships, right? And we're like, I don't like how he's treating me or I don't like my benefits package. I'm not even, he did this first first month and now he's not doing it second month. Yeah. Um, He used to rub my back and get me water. Now I'm thirsty over here and uh, my back hurts. So like Mm -hmm. the, the dynamics of the relationship change, but we start telling ourselves because of fear that I'm not going to be able to get into another relationship, or maybe this is the best that I'm going to get, or maybe mm-hmm. there's not another company that's going to hire me. And I don't want to be back on yeah. the market on drought for six months. Cause that's yeah. what, you know, it usually takes to hop into another job. And I feel like same way for relationships, yeah. uh, <laughs> depending on how hard you work and put your resume out there. Okay. Um, yeah. you get, we could get you recruited quick if you're working <laughs> hard, but we work harder for our work than we do, for relationships, because a lot of times we don't want to put ourselves out there 
as if we're seeking or we're thirsty because we're so concerned about how it looks versus moving strategically like what Tamari and I are telling you guys. And when you move with strategy and you're like, I know I want to be in a relationship, I want to be a wife, then we need to date and move as if that's what the goal is, if that's what the objective Mm -hmm. is. And you're not going to accomplish that objective by sitting on your couch because you broke up with someone six months ago and you ain't done a dang thing on a daily basis to serve your goal. Yep. So, oh, I love that example yes. because that's like saying in, okay, that's like you wanted to be a doctor, but you're working at a tire company. Like, are you going to say, <laughs> yes. you know what I mean? Like you haven't even, are you going to medical school? Like, why would you, it's for the security. Like you literally are just doing it for the money. And we always, there's times in our life where we'll have to do things for money or just to take care of our family. I think the same thing happens when your relationship, like you might need to have that relationship as like a clutch because maybe there's something else that's out of whack in your life and Uh that's your stability, even though you know it's not the right relationship. I've been in that situation, we know. (laughs) 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 um, But at some point you have to look and say, is this aligned with my goal? Is this aligned with my relationship path? Is this aligned with my career path? If it's not, you're just wasting time and you're not serving your highest good and you're not going to get paid your worth. You're not going to be treated your worth because you're not in a situation that is aligned with your spirit and with your life purpose. Cause all of that's connected. Like your partner who you're with, that person is a part of your journey. Those, yeah. If you're with the right partner, you're on your life journey the way it should be. Yep. So that's dangerous to not be in a relationship that's going to lead you to your life purpose. That sounds frightening to me. You know what I mean? That part. So like yeah. another danger that comes with not being in a relationship that leads you to your life's purpose is that you aren't one preparing yourself in a way that sets you up for success. Like to your point, because let me add this onto it. Um, if you are used to compromising the role that you guys should be in, you're used to it. You've gotten comfortable to compromising. And no matter what relationship you're entering in, you've gotten comfortable not being in the committed relationship, not getting the title. When eight relationships later, you finally decide that you're going to demand that, um, you're not going to have the same level of confidence and Mm -hmm. self-esteem because you haven't had the practice of competence to what that conversation looks like, to what demanding that looks like, to what commanding that looks like. And so when it comes time for you to step up to the plate and you're like, okay, I want to change my relationship status. I actually want to be in a committed relationship or want to be married now. Well, you haven't put any like sweat in the game to be able to actually say like confidently, like I can get this. You've started, you've actually out talked yourself and you've actually operated with limiting beliefs by Mm -hmm. not demanding that, by not thinking that the universe will bless you with that, by not expecting that and moving on Mm -hmm. to the next person. You set yourself up for this pattern and this vibration of complacency and settling. So that adds to your delay in gaining the confidence or gaining the competence that it takes to demand and require this because now you're looking up years later and you're like, having conversations with yourself, like, well, then can I really ask for this? You know, Mm. what if I don't get this? What if I don't get this? You programmed yourself to say, what if I don't get this versus programming yourself every time you get with the man and saying, nope, (laughs) I deserve this. I expect this. I require this. And boo, if you ain't on the same page with me and you don't see my worth and that I am quality girlfriend material or quality fiance or quality wife material, then you ain't got good taste on to the next. Like you actually have to have these conversations with yourself in advance in order to get the role that you're applying for. And I mean, this is scientific too. Studies do show that the conversations that you have with yourself set you up for success or failure. Yeah. So you got to get used to being in an element of, nope, I require this and I'm not going to settle for less than what I require. And my title will be wife. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you will operate um, on every in every relationship like that. And yeah. he will let you know if he's not on the same page with you. If he's like, oh, I don't see you as wifey material or yeah. um, I'm not interested in marriage. Like you should know that in advance. And this conversation yep. probably isn't for the people who are like anti-marriage, right? This is not a, con- this yeah. episode is not for the people who don't want to subscribe to societal standards of mm-hmm. marriage. Like yeah. that's a whole nother, like I'll, I don't know. Uh, I'll bring a boyfriend and girlfriend that have been, 
together forever on for that episode. Yeah. This is for people <laughs> who actually do care about the title and are settling for less than the title. People who yeah. do know that it means something to them. And while our worth can't be surrounded around relationship and title, it we can't help that it does affect us. It does affect yeah. our esteem when someone doesn't accept us and when someone does reject us. And while we can build up those muscles, what we need to be building those muscles up to is not, oh, I'm just going to accept rejection. I'm just going to accept rejection. I'm going to accept rejection, identify why I got rejected or why I didn't get my way, change that behavior that serves me and be able to figure out what I learned from this so that I can get it next time. Yeah, I mean, I no, it. no, I'm not about to settle down with you. You, you, I'm just gonna. I see you as a situation ship, boo, and I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, what can I learn from this? <laughs> he doesn't yeah. want me, mama. <laughs> <laughs> my <Like>, mama, <laughs> why? <laughs> and I had to learn from it and move on to the next. So, like, I got the proper title that I wanted. So yeah. it, it all speaks to experience and you having to go through it. <laughs> oh, and to that point, there's also going to be times where people just don't want you because just like there's systemic racism in the workplace mm-hmm. and there's, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, gender bias and all that stuff. Yeah. There's that in dating and you just have to, that has nothing to do with you. And that's hard to accept because, you know, that's a blow to the ego, but it will happen. So when while you're on your dating journey, you have to, you're going to encounter people that don't like you because of the way you look or they don't like you the way, the way you dress. Facts. Those aren't the right people for you. Just like somebody that's discriminating against you in the workplace is not the right fit. You don't want to mm-hmm. end up in that job. You don't want to end up in that relationship. So see that as a blessing. I had a man tell me he didn't like my curls. And he was like, I don't find oh you attractive with your curly hair. What? You just keep it straight. Uh, what? That is crazy, man. <laughs> but employers have told me that too. So I'm like, oh, so see, employers see. and my man. Oh, I oh can't. My God. This ain't going to work. That is ridiculous. <laughs> No, the way my hair naturally is, get out of here. <laughs> but that's like, right? That's like experiences that you may experience in the workplace. Yes. It's a, a random reason why he doesn't want me. But like, you have to, okay, well, I'm gonna push through. We're just not right for each other then. If you don't find me attractive exactly. because of that, we're not compatible. So it's exactly. like, same thing with the workplace. If they want to discriminate against you for whatever reason, I accept that. It's not a reflection of my worth. You're not going to yeah. devalue me. I'm going to still go to the highest bidder next time. <laughs> exactly. Totally. Oh, I love that. Yes. Before I wrap up, will you please tell me signs that are going to demand relationship titles yeah. over signs that are more likely to be a little bit like lucid yeah. with relationship titles, just so that people can, when they're listening to this, they can be like, hmm, my Zodiac sign needs to step it up or hmm, my <laughs> Zodiac sign needs to chill. Like, Talk to me a little bit about our zodiacs and how that affects our demand for titles. Yes. Now we love. We know Spicy Mighty loves a study, but these aren't studies. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Talk about the moon and the stars. Yes. Observed (laughs) behaviors, research, spiritual studies. (laughs) So, um, for the most part, uh, signs that are more uh, able to commit to things in general are going to commit to relationships. So that might be Capricorn, like we already discussed. Um, because Capricorn is about seeing the fruits of their labor. Taurus, for sure, another earth sign that's about stability and wants to kind of know where they stand. Um, Libra is another sign that's big on partnership. Um, I I noticed that not all Libras are going to ask for what they deserve because it's their sign is equated to partnership. And so a lot of them are codependent. Not I'm not we're generalizing here, right? So there can be codependent Libras. So sometimes they might hop in relationships just because they want to be in a relationship and then not have the title. So it can go both ways. Um, the signs that I feel like that are not, oh, cancer is another one that has a tendency to like the familiar. So they probably would be more prone to wanting a committed or a title. Um, the mutable sign, so mutable means like flexible. They like, you know, change. Those are uh, Pisces. Virgo, Sagittarius, and Gemini. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying all of those signs don't like titles, mm-hmm. but I would say if there are going to be some that were prone to not having a title and being cool with the situationship, I would say my top pick would be Gemini. Um, Sagittarius <laughs> is all about freedom. Mm. And, you know, they don't like to be tied down. So there's got to be a damn good reason why they're going to give you that title. And if you're boring, then it's not going to cut it. And Pisces likes to go with the flow. They're more gypsy. Some of them are like gypsies, so they might not demand it. But um, 
definitely earth signs. I feel like Virgo too is a sign that would want to be like, where do I stand? Mm. Um, even though they're a little bit flexible too, because it's the earth sign. They want to know where they're going. Um, and Scorpio, Scorpio is all or nothing. So they either like we're in it together or we're not. So they're going to give you their all or they're not going to give but you But I anything. thought Scorpios were like, hot in these streets or over, aren't they, they the time that's over sexualized? I feel bad for Scorpio. They, <laughs> Everybody just assumes they, Scorpios are freaks. <laughs> I know they do. That's because Scorpio is equated with the genitals. So it does have a connection because all astrology signs, zodiac signs are connected to a part of the body. I'm Scorpio, Scorpio rising just, Virgo me too. moon. So Your Virgo moon. So all my signs expect or demand. <laughs> oh, because Scorpio is about, it's a fixed sign. It, it likes, um, it's determined. And so it likes to, inc- like, I had a guy that I was dating that was Scorpio. I went on one date with him and he was like, I want to own your soul. Like, that's how he was talking <laughs> to me. And I'm like, this, this craziness? Like, so they want to, like, some of them want to drink your blood. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you're mine. That type of your mind energy. Yeah. Um, so I would say they are not going to, but, but they can also be a freak in the sheet too yeah. and just mm-hmm. leave it as long as that's defined. They don't want to be manipulate it so just mm. tell them where you stand with them those are the ones that kind of jump out and if we didn't miss uh mention your sign don't get offended leo i know you love to be mentioned all the time so, um <laughs> what are leo's, leo's are gonna want that title. oh leo's are definitely gonna want that title they're yeah. like oh you're not gonna make me the wifey oh for sure because so they're leo like operating the they operate in like pride and ego very much right yes the sun the run the sun is their ruler like so they're like oh no you're for sure gonna give me that title so i would say leo's too Okay, so this is like to help you guys out there for if you are on the dating market, uh, what signs may or may not like be more likely to commit or give you the title. Um, Another thing that I feel like we just have to add on, I don't know if we said this clearly, is like, I feel I feel like titles give you an umph and motivating factor in Mm -hmm. looking forward to something. I know I'm Mm -hmm. motivated to lose that extra 10 pounds when I know I'm going to be in a swimsuit on the beach. (laughs) <laughs> so the, the, I need things that motivate me. And if I mm-hmm. think that I'm going to be in the same position for the rest of my life, right. Or, or if I'm going to make the same amount of money for the rest of my life, or if I'm going to have the same relationship, even me now married, right. I'm like, okay, so what's next? Like, yeah. where are we going to go next? What are we going to do next? What's our next relationship yeah. goal? Um, I need something to look forward to. I need to constantly feel that I'm progressing. And yeah. I think that that, plays heavily in relationship as well like what are we progressing to what's the next milestone um are we going to start a family next like there needs to be something in the progression so I don't feel like we are just like stuck and sunk exactly I think that's another reason why titles are important as well when it comes to relationships and dating in like we've accomplished something We, we were able to stay in this for the long game and like move to the next level and identify with one another what this next milestone is and what it looks like. And I'm huge on giving, getting, looking for reasons to celebrate. (laughs) I'm like, totally. It's women's history month this month. Shout out to all the ladies. (laughs) I'm throwing a party. (laughs) We did this weekend. We threw a party. Um, (laughs) I'm constantly, what's next month? I want a reason to celebrate next month. Like it motivates you. And I feel like titles do that as well. So like, for sure. To Mary and I say all this to say, we give you all the signs and like, we're telling you all this, um, you know, spicy advice so that you guys can not feel ashamed or shunned because you want a relationship title, or maybe you're in a situation because you're, and you're not getting it, but I stand confidently and firmly with you in the, in the, in the stands of, if that's what you want by golly, damn it, go for it. Make sure that you don't stop till you get it. And it may not be with who you expected it to be with. We may have to move on to the next until we get our needs met. Yes. Amen. Okay. (laughs) Let the church say (laughs) amen. (laughs) Okay, Todd, we are closing out the show. So happy that you joined us. You are going to have to let everybody know where to find you. Where can they get their Zodiac reading? Um, Tell everybody know where they, let let us know where they can go. Yes, you can go to my website. It's astrofashionista.com. It's long, but it's how it sounds. Astro and fashionista.com. You can follow me on IG at astrofashionista. Those are probably the top best ways to find me. 
Yes. And you guys always can play with my Twitter, stroke my Instagram at SpicyMati. Go to the spicylife.com, um, schedule a consultation. I would love to help you in your love life. Also, make sure that you guys click and subscribe to this episode, to the Spicy Life. Share it with a friend, spread the love. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. Boom. Ow. The Spicy Life.